Hello, this is Jonathan from Robotus, and today I'll be going over how to implement current-based Dynamics control in the Dynamics to Arduino library. The current-based control mode supported by Dynamics actuators allows setting limitations on the maximum amount of output torque generated by the servos for the implementation of force-limited motions or for compliant operation. Robotus provides example sketches with the Dynamics to Arduino library showing the implementation of this feature along with many others. In this video, I'll go over a modified version of the current mode example sketch in detail to show you how the code is put together. The exact sketch that I'll be using is available through the GitHub link included in the video description. In order to follow along with this exploration, you'll also need to have the Arduino IDE installed as well as the Dynamics to Arduino programming library. I've also created a 3D printed horn attachment that I'm using in this video. The attachment is only to make it easier for me to handle the horn to test the current base control modes. If you have a 3D printer, the STL file is included in the GitHub repo alongside the example program. Otherwise, you can feel free to follow along without it. During this video, I'll be using an OpenRB150 microcontroller and an XM430 servo, but you'll be able to follow along using any Arduino compatible Dynamixel controller and any Dynamixel X series servo. Before we get started, let's see what running the current position mode example code looks like. Then we can get started on explaining more about the code. Now that we've seen what the code does, let's head into the explanation. The first few lines of any Arduino sketch are the include statements required to import any needed libraries. In our case, we require the inclusion of the Dynamixel to Arduino library in order to properly communicate with our Dynamixel actuators. The next series of lines is something specific to Dynamixel control sketches. Definitions for serial communication pins needed for interfacing with Dynamixel servos. These pin definitions are included with every Dynamixel to Arduino programming example and provide the correct definition for the debug serial console and serial communication direction pins for the majority of common Arduino based microcontrollers, as well as our Arduino based microcontrollers provided by Robotus. We don't need to make any changes to this section now, but advanced users will need to make changes here if they want to add Dynamixel support to a new microcontroller. The next few lines define a few constants we'll be using in this sketch. Constants are a special type of variable in programming used for values that need to stay the same throughout the entire program. In our case, we'll be using constants to define the ID of the connected Dynamixel and the version of the Dynamixel protocol we'll be communicating in. By default, Dynamixels come with an ID of 1. If your Dynamixel is a different ID number, be sure to change this definition here to match it or to change the ID of your Dynamixel back to 1. For most users, the default of Dynamixel Protocol 2 is the correct choice. The next line creates the Dynamixel to Arduino object that we'll be using to interact with and control our servos. This line uses the pin definitions that I talked about earlier in order to create the serial communication connection that we'll be using. The final line in this section imports a namespace for the Dynamixel to Arduino library. This namespace allows us to use human readable names to refer to Dynamixel control table items, instead of only being able to reference them by their memory location. Now that we've gone through this opening section of definitions and other needed programming components, we can move on to the setup function. The first line in the setup section opens the debug communication port on the microcontroller, enabling us to use Arduino's built-in debug console to keep an eye on what our code is doing. The second line waits for us to open a connection through this debug console before allowing us to continue with the rest of the program. The remainder of the setup section consists of function calls to the Dynamixel to Arduino library for configuring our connected Dynamixels. The first line defines the baud rate we'll be using to communicate with our Dynamixels. By default, the baud rate is set to 57600 megabits per second. For our example today, the default communication speed is fine. But if your application requires low latency, increasing the baud rate is one way to achieve faster response times. The next line uses the Dynamixel protocol constant we defined earlier in order to set the active communications protocol. Now, 
we have three lines that send commands to our connected Dynamixel. The DXL torque on and off functions take the supplied ID number and toggle power to the motor of the specified servo on or off, and are their primary method of enabling or disabling servo motion. The set operating mode command is a function that provides a simplified way to set the operating mode of the Dynamixel actuator. This function requires an ID number as well as a desired operating mode as arguments. Since we've defined the control table item namespace in this program, we can specify the desired operating mode by name, otherwise we'd need to specify it by its number. It may seem strange at first to toggle off the torque before changing the operating mode sentence and then immediately enable it again, but doing so is required to modify this setting. The operating mode setting for Dynamixel actuators is stored in a protected section of Dynamixel memory and is not allowed to be modified while the actuator's torque is enabled. In order to modify this value and other values stored in similar memory locations, torque must be turned off, but we can re-enable it immediately until we need to modify another important configuration setting. Now we can move on to the main loop and talk about what's actually needed in order to implement current control for a Dynamixel servo. The first line in the main loop creates an incrementing variable that we'll be using to set the torque values throughout this example. The second puts us into a nested loop where the logic of our program will occur. The first line inside the endless loop multiplies the incrementing variable that we created by 2 in order to generate a number that we'll be using to set the torque limit in this program. Then we have several Dynamixel to Arduino functions, starting with one setting a goal position. This line uses the set goal position and get present position functions to set a goal position matching the actuator's current physical position. In other words, this line tells the actuator to try its best to stay where it currently is. Then we set our desired goal current equal to the variable we created by doubling our incrementing variable. And since we've defined the control table item namespace, we can specify that we want our goal current interpreted as a percentage. Then we have some lines that output the current state of our actuator to the serial console, so we can see what we're doing. Then we delay for 5 seconds so we can handle our actuator and see how current base position mode behaves. Afterward, we turn off the torque so we can switch the active operating mode to current mode. Then we use another command to set the same goal current that we were using previously, followed by another set of print statements similar to the first one and another 5 second wait for us to test out our actuator. The last few lines prepare us to start the next iteration of the endless loop by setting the control mode back to position based mode. As seen when I ran the program at the start of the video, this program alternates between attempting to hold its current position in current base mode to trying to endlessly turn in standard current mode. I recommend that new Dynamixel users take some time to play around with this example program and to get familiar with how their Dynamixel actuators behave in current control mode. Changing the specified goal current or trying out different goal positions will help you learn more about how your actuator will perform as well as how to work with the Dynamixel to Arduino libraries. This example sketch provides a strong foundation for the implementation of current-based control modes in your custom Dynamixel application. Referring to it alongside your documentation in our online e-manual will go a long way to improving your Arduino-based Dynamixel projects. If you'd like even more information, the source code and additional example sketches are available on Robotis' official Dynamixel to Arduino GitHub repository. If you have any other additional questions, or you just want to show off a Dynamixel to Arduino project that you've created, you can always feel free to drop by the Robotis community and say hello. This has been Jonathan Probatis, and I look forward to building more with you soon.